Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital. I'm back again with another video. And today we're gonna talk about convolution reverbs. What are they? And we're gonna download one from the internet that's free and see if it's any good. But first things first, what is a convolution reverb? Well, there's basically two types of reverbs. There's convolution and there's algorithmic. And a lot of the um, reverbs that you'll come across are actually algorithmic reverbs. And those are the most popular type that you'll find used in recordings that you're probably familiar with. They sound great and they can do things that you can't do with an actual real space. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Now with a convolution reverb, you're actually, it's analogous to how you can compare a sampler to a synthesizer, right? An algorithmic reverb is like a synthesizer where you're basically using mathematical algorithms to create a space. And the convolution reverb is like a sampler where you're sampling a space and then recreating that, that sampled space. So with a convolution reverb, you use something called an impulse and or impulse response uh, recording basically. And you load that in and then you get the sound that that was recorded from. You can actually load in anything, any, any wave file into a lot of the different um, convolution reverbs and you'll get an output. It'll probably sound pretty weird, but you'll get an output. And that's a cool way to experiment and get some awesome results. Let's just take a listen to the difference between an algorithmic reverb and a um, convolution reverb. Here I have the reverb that comes with Bitwig here. I'm gonna play a little piano. Turn it off. Now a lot of the, the details between these reverbs can be heard in the tails. So this particular reverb has a bit of a fuzziness in the, the trail there. Now let's switch to a convolution reverb. You can hear there's a lot more complexity there in the trail. This um, one is, is tuned to a longer decay time, so it's not an exact comparison, but you can definitely hear a big difference. The, the upper um, harmonics are kind of trailing down more quickly. There's, there's more richness, there's more complexity. So if you want a very authentic sound, you're gonna to wanna to go convolution. Um, but again, a lot of recordings that you've heard don't use convolution, they use algorithmic reverbs, and there's a lot of different algorithms out there. Um, so you you wanna kind of see what's gonna work best for you, try a few different ones, and then you can um, decide what's gonna be best for your particular application. So anyway, let's go into actually finding one of these a free one, and then we're going to see what it's all about and if it's worth our time. Now this one right here actually is a free one. It's a 32 bit only, it's a little bit old. It works pretty good. I've been using it for a while, but I decided to go online and see if I could find something better. So let's do that. Okay, so I did a Google search. I came to this Bedroom Producers blog website and they recommend this Convology, Convology XT plugin. Looks pretty decent, um, so let's try it. Let's go to their website here and we can download it. So we'll see if they make us jump through a bunch of hoops to get it. They probably will want us to make an account. So let's look here and see what they're saying. All right, let's see if they make us do. They already made us click twice, so it can get ugly. Might get ugly. Okay, I gotta add this to cart, of course. I'm not gonna buy anything else. Let's see. Do I have to put any of this stuff? Okay, so they want me to fill in this stuff for sure, my name and stuff, all right. Okay, so that's pretty painless. They just made me put in my address, my phone number, and my name, uh, and then they give me uh, the code I need. Okay, so we gotta download it, and I'm gonna do something ill-advised. I'm gonna keep um, Bitwig running in the background while I install this, just to see if I can. 
blah, blah, blah. Firstborn child, I think. Okay. Why not? I don't need this. And Steinberg. No, no, no Steinberg. All right. Yes, complete. Okay, close it. Now let's see if it shows up in a bit swig. What was it called again? Convolutality or something. So let's uh, see if we can load it in. Here it is. Um, we got 32 bit. Why did I load 32 bit on here? I don't even know. But we're going to use the VST3. Um, it will expire soon. So we want to register. Okay, it's been successfully registered. Nice. Now, where's your interface, brah? Yeah, there we go. All right, here it is, guys. Let's see what it sounds like out the books. Nothing. All right, let's try the factory. Let's see what this says. Whoa, that sounds hideous. But I guess it's simulating a 80s, 90 DSP. Is it even in stereo right now? Now this seems like it's only coming out of one ear for some reason. Did I not install it properly? Yeah. This is mono for sure. So for some reason, the VST3 version isn't giving me any stereo output. It's just giving me mono. I don't know why that is. But the VST2 version here is giving me stereo. So if you get this, I don't know if you'll have the same exact problem. I have no idea why the, the VST3 is behaving this way, but the VST2 works and I don't know that there's any real advantage over using VST3. Now, when I look through the factory library that comes with, there doesn't seem to be any actual spaces. There seem to be just giving us algorithmic reverbs. That sound pretty good to my ears, but um, I was hoping for some real spaces in here somewhere. The plates sound pretty good, which is an actual acoustic sort of thing. Yeah, it sounds pretty great, actually. Let's see if we can import some other um, convolution impulses and see how those behave. So let's see how easy that is. We can go to the file browser here, and if I can find this other one, this liquid audio guy here, some real spaces. And let's go with the choir room and see if we can get one of these guys to work. Let's try the uh, center guy here. Pretty cool. Now let's try the same one on the other one here. So these two do sound a bit different and I'm trying to make sure that everything else is turned off. Uh, there's some different settings here for the hold and release times. Okay, so I guess at the end of the day, um, I feel like this one is a little bit easier to deal with. Um, it's, it has a kind of a menu system here, whereas this one is just going through files. This is pretty bare bones. This one has a nice mix knob as opposed to separate wet and dry, which I don't like. I love to have just a mix knob. Even though this one has a better selection, of impulses, you can just download this one for free too, get the impulses and use it in this guy. So um, I would say this is pretty much worth it. Yeah, these sound pretty pretty great. And we have some other uh, features here too that I didn't actually uh, go through, but look, you can even see what this is supposed to be emulating. With this one here, we can get some emulations, or you know, some really, very, very accurate um, recreations of both a bunch of classic algorithmic reverbs of some echo spaces 
um, it's ba- you know, th- these are like um, basically analog machines that do echo and reverb and so forth, which is pretty great. We got plates here. I love the sound of plates, some good plate sounds here and some spring reverbs if you're into that sort of stuff. And then some uh, German um, reverb machines that I've never heard before in my life. Let's look at some of the more off the wall things you can do with a convolution reverb. Um, Let's go into this strange impulse response folder here. They let me. Let's try this traffic sample. So this traffic sample here sounds like this. Okay, so you can hear that that's in there. What we can do is decay it. Yeah, let's look at some of the other kind of weirder things we can do. Let's go to presets. Let's try synthesized and effects. Falling rocks. That sounds cool. Okay, I'm feeling that. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Digital crazy. Let's look at that. Uh, let's look at this thing. Hmm, that's kind of cool. So you can see you can get a lot of variety using different impulses. These are ones that were specifically designed, um, well, you know, for this this guy here, but they're interchangeable in different convolution reverbs. But you can also just throw in some wave files and see what they do. It could be cool, it might be stupid, but it's definitely worth a try. Let's just um, put something in pretty crazy. Let's try this sample and see what it sounds like. Okay, so this is a piano sample. Let's load this in and see what we get. Nope. Drag and drop apparently will not work. So I guess I have to go in manually. Hmm. Very interesting. Let's give it a shorter decay. So to sum up, convolution reverbs are great. They're very powerful. They're very flexible. And um, they can do some sounds that are difficult or impossible to get in other ways. Of course, you are always limited to the um, response uh, files that you have. But they're pretty easy to get. And you can use basically any WAV file as a response. There's an endless amount of fun to be had with one of these. This free one here seems to be pretty good as far as I can tell. They didn't make me jump through too many hoops. And I like the fact that with the factory content you have, 
images of the different devices that they have um, gotten impulse responses for, and that it will load up and use other impulse responses pretty seamlessly and easily. So yeah, you can download this at uh, the website I showed you there. I'll put a link in the description and, um, you know, definitely try using it. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Thanks for watching and hey, have a wonderful day. Bye.